The following is testimony that I gave this evening, December 5th, uh, 2019, at Dobbins Technical High School. It was a subcommittee hearing on education and the workforce that was held as part of uh, City, Philadelphia City Council's uh, special committee on poverty prevention and reduction. Um, I do want to say that it was a very long hearing that had six panels um, and over 20 official speakers on the panels, such that that initial testimony took well over two, two and a half hours. And by the time it was time for public comment, um, there were 20 people that had signed up in advance, including myself, that there were initially plans to not allow any of the public to comment. And after considerable public um, sort of protesting of that situation, ultimately they did agree to allow the public to speak. And of that, by that time, most of the people had left there were eight um, people remaining who were public speakers, and even though I had signed up and confirmed by email um, regarding speaking at the event and providing testimony, my name was still not called until the end. So ultimately, I was the very last speaker that evening, um, which I have to say, I think it has to do something with the fact of the information that I wanted to share. So I hope you will find it helpful. All right, uh, good evening, thank you so much. Um, my name is Allison McDowell. I am a parent of a former Philadelphia Public School student. Um, my experience uh, in 2013 with the school closures really um, stepped me up in terms of my activism and my ability to research and sort of track power and money. And um, my, my child has graduated, they're, they're um, finishing their first semester at college, and now I've moved on because I realized these issues that have addressed public education are actually so much bigger and actually are all centered on poverty and public benefit systems. Um, and the things I'm gonna talk about really reach out to housing, uh, healthcare, incarceration, substance abuse, it's pretty much everything. And I appreciate having the chance to, to lay this out because um, it's actually my birthday tonight. Um, so this is how I'm spending my birthday is to be here because I think I've done this research and it's really important that it be on the public record. So um, also I, I shared with the, the gentleman coordinating before um, at last week's uh, hearing on housing, I spoke about uh, NAACP resolution opposing blockchain identity linked to public benefit systems that was passed in California. And I'm going to email that, but I would like to make sure that that is added to the public record as well as a precedent. Um, so. We are uh, living in a time of extreme wealth and devastating poverty. The future of work is highly uncertain. Based on pronouncements from the Markle Foundation, the Aspen Institute, Pearson, and Tom Vander Ark's Global Education, Education Futures Initiative, we need to be paying attention to the rise of artificial intelligence, globalized platformed labor, and human-robot collaboration. The MacArthur Foundation and its spin-off Collective Shift have spent millions of dollars promoting gamified online digital media and learning. And Philadelphia is one of their pilot cities of LRNG, and many LRNG cities are also smart cities. Uh, Dallas, Chicago, San Diego, San Jose among them. Uh, digital learning is central to the premise of the learning ecosystem advanced by KnowledgeWorks, which is based in Cincinnati, as well as its cradle to career social impact offshoot Strive Together. And the latter works closely with United Way through a collective impact network that is focused, in my opinion, on predatory pay for success human capital management. So those in power have reimagined education, and in this future that they envision, decentralized learning ecosystems replace bricks and mortar schools. Learning is privatized, outsourced to online providers, nonprofits, and corporations, and there are there are a few community drop-in centers. Uh, mostly run by AmeriCorps and mentors. Um, academic and behavioral competencies are kept in online learning record stores. AI mentors and even synthetic people, which are being developed with the Army and Disney, supplant human teachers and peers. Learning is engineered by neuroscientists. Internet of Things sensors and XAPI software impose educational surveillance. Badges developed in partnership with Mozilla substitute for degrees. Lifelong learning, as they call it, is funded using digital vouchers that link payment to the delivery of specified performance metrics by the person being trained or the person supposedly being educated. If you accept the voucher, you hand over the data. In this way, even homeschool families will be sucked in. Algorithms increasingly are screening job candidates, so they will look at their stackable credentials along with psychographic information pulled from custom-designed HR video games, which they know about over there at Wharton. 
Uh, black and brown children are risk profiled from birth and plugged into planned regional economies or incarceration or the military, managed for the benefit of the corporate state, increasingly Google and cyber defense interests. Dystopia? Yes. We are here. <laughs> In this future, opportunity youth are trained as middle skill fodder for the fourth industrial revolution, and dehumanized education employs virtual apprenticeships upon which Lumina Foundation, Salesforce, and Robinhood Foundation place wagers betting for or against a person's life outcomes data. That seems to be what motivated bipartisan support for the Foundations for Evidence-Based Policymaking Act, uh, the Pay for Success provision in the Edu Every Student Succeeds Act, and the seed funding from the Social Impact Partnerships Pay for Results Act that would get the ball rolling. Evidently, there is a lot of money to be made gambling on poor people. People are being sold on coding as a pathway out of poverty, not realizing it's this generation's piecework. STEM sweatshops to build augmented reality smart worlds for those who run the cloud and the hedge funds that finance them. They will probably start to emerge in the federal opportunity zone soon. Digital on-ramps. Well, they were put in place by Michael and Lisa Nutter years ago with the smart city money from IBM, and they wait in the wings as the Philadelphia Ed Fund STEM ecosystem wraps up, and that's uh, funded by GlaxoSmithKline. Authentic knowledge will be replaced with isolated online learning, out-of-school time education, Pokemon Go style micro-knowledge aligned to the interests of funders like Dow, Chevron, Amgen, and Motorola. So those in power see our children as raw material to be run through a federal labor database, ONET, based in Raleigh, EDS and MEDS, skills delivered in quantities sufficient to suppress wages while optimizing profit. Meanwhile, educational pathways are tracked for value-added growth data to run pay-for-success futures markets. Learning Machine out of MIT has set up blockchain transcripts with Paul LeBlanc at Southern uh, New Hampshire University. Dr. Height served with him as an educational advisor at Ridge Lane Limited Partners. My question is who we should ask about Ampli, the pre-chain blockchain identity app launched by Innovation Edge in Cape Town, South Africa. Because I hear folks in Philadelphia have been briefed, but I'm not sure who's the point of contact on that. Worker productivity is high, wages are low, precarious employment the norm. Closed door deals are struck as Chamber of Commerce insiders line up the policy, finance, and technological infrastructure needed to control the masses. Pay for success, money ball what works government, behavioral economics, the nudge, every policy wonk, philanthropist, global consultant, and more data. What we need is the will to redistribute resources from a billionaire class steeped in white supremacy. Resources must go directly to poor folks. Self-determination is key. It is wrong to channel these monies through intermediaries whose continued existence really depends on intractable poverty. Solidarity, not charity. Instead of Koffel's digital peonage will chain people through their biometric digital identity linked to public benefit systems. And eventually, if they get their way, this will include education savings accounts that you can use to purchase competency-based education on the open market, that data being fed back into pay for success deals for education. So you can look up State Representative Frank Ferry and Social Innovation Journal's Parents as Consumers Symposium that was planned for June 15, 2018, but abruptly canceled. That agenda, which is attached in the pieces that I have circulated, clearly describes the goal of linking ESAs to pay for success, which is the problem with the weighted funding formula. If it doesn't go to schools, it goes with children as digital vouchers, and that's the end game. And so we are here at Dobbins Career and Technical Education High School to discuss education and poverty. Some still trust elected officials to deliver their children opportunities for stable lives, presuming if they work hard, they'll get that. And yet the reality of pending labor automation is harsh and unforgiving. Who's going to tell the public there will be no more shop teachers and that the plan is outsourced work-based learning? No one is going to say they're replacing neighborhood schools with IBM and Ford training centers, and no one wants to admit the National Center on Education and the Economy's proposal laid out by Mark Tucker in the Dear Hillary letter all those years ago is ready to launch, that most future jobs will be gigs. You should put that on the agenda to look that up. Um, and that those gigs will only go to the people with the right sort of human capital. Because behavioral data is big, and it's becoming the social credit currency. So build up your personal brand starting in pre-K, maybe at those Hatch Education Surveillance play tables they have planned out. Because those in power are watching, always watching. And the rise of the robot class means people are becoming more and more disposable. The United States compulsory system of education has been used since its inception to reinforce divisions of race and class. It delivers human capital to meet industrial interests. Youth train just enough to do the work required, but not to imagine a future beyond the one defined by the pathways on which they are put. 
What is needed to eliminate poverty is revolutionary transformation. Poverty reduction is not about narrowing gaps. That rift was already too far too great, even as the Founding Fathers hammered out our duplicitous Constitution. The system isn't broken. Trump didn't break it, neither did DeVos. Our education system is working exactly as intended. So I will close with a quote from Paolo Freire, Pedagogia of the Oppressed. With false generosity, he attempts not only to preserve an unjust and necrophilic order, but to buy peace for himself. It happens that peace cannot be bought. Peace is experienced in solidarity and loving acts, which cannot be incarnated in oppression. We need to become conscious. We need the oppressed to wake up to the sinister intent of the planned Fourth Industrial Revolution, and we need education for liberation. Liberation will not be attained through an appointed committee. It's created in the streets, doing the work with love and solidarity. And that is where we need to be. Thank you.